so we're doing 134, 135, number 1 to 8. Okay. Yes? Uh, cause I'm going to post this later cause uh, I'm going to be doing this over with the other class, but if anybody misses this or wants to go over this stuff again. Wait, do we need to make that unit two? Uh, you, if you want to start your unit two in your notebook with that, it's a good okay. idea. We're starting a new unit. Okay. So, a something is a pure substance that cannot be broken down farther or further by chemical or physical means. Oh, an, element. an element. Good job. Good job. Okay. B. A something is a substance that can be broken down into elements by chemical means. Molecular compounds are formed when a non-metal bonds with A or an... Metal? No. What? Wait. Molecular? Molecular. Yeah. Um, actually, it's not there, really. Um, it should say ion. Well, let's see. It should be a non-metal. Uh, molecular compounds are non-metal with non-metal. Uh, ionic compounds are metal with uh, non-metal. So, let's just see what the other ones are, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll fix that up. Okay. So D and E. Something electrons are those found in an atom atom's outermost occupied energy level. Phoenix? Valence, yes. Okay, so valence is the outermost shell. Um, and uh, something is an atom that has lost or gained valence electrons. Ions. Ions. An ion. Sorry? Doesn't see. Uh, if you're doing by the word bank there, but actually molecular compounds we're going to use, we're going to talk about those as non-metal with non-metal, and ionic compounds... So, which... Another name for a molecular compound, by the way, is a uh, covalent compound. Okay, so non-metal. So really, uh, let's say if that question had said ionic compounds, then it would be non-metal plus a metal, and that would be correct. Good. Why would the textbook say that? I know. Why would they do that? That's wrong. If I'm wrong, then I will be... I don't think you're wrong because I just Googled it. Yeah, I mean, so I could be wrong, so wrong, and I will not post this. I will probably fix it if I am totally wrong about this. You should edit it and make it like a long Oh, my God. And do like funny little... Like, edit it out every time that you should talk. Hi. Wait, like what? Jalal is the greatest. <laughs> no, no, Jalal, everyone already knows that. They don't know Oh, yeah. Well, it is on the internet. Oh, that's fine. That's too many back. Yeah, non-metal, non-metal. Aaron, you're going to look really good today. Leave me alone. <laughs> Yeah. 
According to Google, mm -hmm. molecular compounds are usually between two or more non-moles, mm -hmm. and the difference between molecular and ionic is that molecular compounds are formed by sharing electrons, and ionic compounds are formed by sharing electrons. Thank you, Carter. Well, I knew you were right. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I, I got a feeling. I think why, I'm, why I, we're good with this. I, I, they, yeah. Maybe they need to fix that. Let's write a letter. One, two, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, Shishiba, do you have something else? You want to say something? Okay, well, we can. you can both do it. Okay, so Jalal, give me one. So oh. the first one is outside, and it, no, that electron is outside, and it's negative, negative charges. Negative, oh. Yeah. Let me see your password first. And it's a small one. Your cord is elastic? And it's uh, small. Jalal, say that, the greatest. Elastic. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I have, I have the other ones that I used to have. Okay. Very, 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 very small. Very, very small. Right, okay, one so hang on, hang on, Shifa, go ahead. Inside. It has no charge. It's neutral. Wait, is it more than the neutral Like one? Sorry? Is it more than Coquilla? It's like by one or something? Oh, like by yeah. what size? Yeah. It's like, Slightly. let's just They're basically like consider it to be the same yeah. size. Yeah. So basically... Well, I, I googled it and it says it's slightly bigger. He's gonna edit it. But like they're basically the same. The size difference is so negligible because also um, during some time, types of radiation they can actually change into each other and so like physically yeah, they should be about the same size. So the third... Yes, go ahead. So it's inside the, the, the nucleus. Relax, I know. It's positive. Jalal said that, the greatest. <laughs> Okay, thank you. And so we give these numbers like number one, one, one plus, and one minus, but really all that means is that there are, in the same way as we were just sort of talking about like a package of energy or a packet of things, there's like a packet of charge. And it's like you either are a one charge positive or a one charge negative, but they're equal. They're equal and opposite. Okay, so there's two charges with different flavors. Okay either positive or negative, and they cancel each other out. If you have one of plus and one of minus, it ends up uh, equaling out to zero. So a neutral particle would have the same number of positives as negatives. On the periodic table, we'll always see that they're listed as neutral compound or neutral elements because they've got the, the, their protons and then an equal number of electrons going around them. Right? So uh, we will then figure out what happens when they decide to do some swaparoos and things like that. But thanks, Jalal. Thanks. Okay, so these are quite big compared to the nucleus, or compared to the uh, to the electron. I mean, very, very big, like a planet versus like a speck of dust sort of thing. Like very small. I am. Kind of wishing I wasn't sometimes. Uh, hi. Okay. So. Wait, is this going on the YouTube? I don't know. At this point, I'm not sure. No, you subscribe. Are you recording? It's quality TV, people. Please don't make me edit. I just want to. I'll, 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 I'll edit for you. you. I'm never going to tell you again that I'm recording something. Okay. I'm in media arts. I'm in media arts, so you know I got that. Yes, I do. Mm. Okay. All right. So, so beryllium. Symbol B E. All right, the symbol is B E. 
group is metal. 30. The group is? Okay, so if it's in the second group, sorry. Yeah, don't, don't yell them out though, please, Peter. Thank you. All right, so we're looking here. We've got beryllium right over there. Yeah. Okay, number four, right? So, uh, yeah, go ahead, Phoenix. It's an alkaline earth metal. Yes, it's an alkaline earth metal. And so if you recall this from last year or from the, your deep and storied past, so the first column, those are the alkali metals. The second column are the alkaline earth metals. Um, there's a bunch of other ones, either the transition metals along the middle here. Uh, second last column is the halogens. And what's the last column? Noble gases. The noble gases, right. So the noble gases are the ones that don't react with anything. Okay. Why are they the noble gases? They're so noble, yes. Why else? Yeah. They have eight electrons Yeah, so their outer shell, their valence shell, is considered to be full. Helium has two. That's all it can fit. But uh, um, uh, all the other ones are, uh, are, are all the way full, okay, with eight. Okay, so, um, so take a look at the, at the other questions. All right. So, a couple things about the periodic table. So whatever number it's given on the periodic table, that is also the number of protons it has. Okay, We call it an atomic number because whatever number of protons it has defines what it is and how it's going to behave. So the protons are the identity of the element. All right, if it's got eight protons, it's oxygen. doesn't matter if it has eight neutrons or nine neutrons or whatever. Wait, what's the point of the neutrons if they're just neutral? That's a very good question. We'll talk about that in just a second. But... The, uh, the, the number of protons then in, in beryllium, since it is number four on the periodic table, there's four, there's four protons. Oh, and then I remember the next answer. Okay. Atomic Yeah, so on the periodic table, we'll, we'll say if it's got four protons, it's got to be neutral, so it also has to have four electrons. So D is also four. And then E is also four. Uh, e, the atomic number, is also four. That's right. So these things are, by definition, the same. Okay. So the atomic number and the number of protons is the same thing. It's not just equal, it's like by definition. The thing that identifies each element is the number of protons, and that's called the atomic number. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. So, now, what's the point of the neutrons? Well, that's a fine question. Um, so, again, what's the charge on a proton? Positive. positive one, right? So if you've got one proton, you're kind of fine. It's just sitting there in the middle doing its thing. But as soon as you have helium, say, you've got now two positive things that are trying to fit together in this nucleus, and they're going to resist each other because they are the same charge. So the neutrons are in there to kind of like make it, yeah, it, it, there's, uh, there are forces, um, very small forces, but nuclear forces, the strong nuclear force, there's all these things. But anyway, that are holding those things together. So the nucleus is held together by this force, but it's also got to be resisting that those protons pushing away from each other, which is why some nuclei are unstable when they get so full of protons that they're just like, can't handle it anymore. And then they, they start spitting stuff out. That's radiation, okay, radioactivity. Okay, so um, an isotope is just a fancy name for um, different, so, uh, Lucy, anyone want to say something? Yeah, yeah. So let's say oxygen, for example. Oxygen, we said, is eight. So oxygen's always going to have eight protons, no matter what. If it's oxygen, it's got to have eight. So eight and eight and eight and eight. These all have, I'm just going to do a couple of different versions of oxygen. Now, what's um, the, the molecular weight of oxygen on the, on the periodic table? 15.99. 15.999. So we're going to round that up to 16. So 16, that means that most oxygen out there must have eight neutrons. 
Okay, they got to add up to that molecular weight. Okay, but there could be a nine one, there could be a seven one, there could be a six, there could be a ten. Right, those molecular weights. This would be uh, let's see, seventeen, fifteen, fourteen, and uh, eighteen. So these we would call these oxygen sixteen. Oxygen, not 17, oxygen 15, oxygen 14, oxygen 18. And really, there's, in, in theory, there could be any number of isotopes. Isotope, again, just means different versions of oxygen that are out there, that are possible. Wait. Iso meaning the same. Okay, iso means same. So these are the same element, but different weights, different numbers of neutrons. So you just add it to the number? Um, sorry, the, uh, that you just added, sorry, say it again? You just added to the number of mass given? Um, well, the neutrons and the protons combined together give you the molecular weight. Now, again, we said, like, on the periodic table, you're going to get a decimal for a molecular weight, but what that, or an atomic weight, but that means that in nature, a sample of oxygen or a sample of carbon or a sample of whatever is going to average out to that, um, that weight. But actually, the individual, if you went to the individual atoms, some of them would be 8 plus 8, some of them would be 8 plus 9, some of them, if, if it's lower, actually, this is 15.999, so that actually means some of them are a little bit lighter. But most of them are 16. Wait, but does that, that, does that have no effect? Like, if you had an oxygen tank and mm -hmm. it was all, like, really heavy, mm -hmm. versus an oxygen tank that was all really light? Oh, like if you if you um, were some were able to like go to a supplier and say, I would like some heavy oxygen. Can you yeah. just like oh, but I mean, just like, just sort like out? Yeah. Like, like you can isolate it, and then you have like the heavy oxygen, and then you have the light oxygen. What difference would it actually make? Okay, very good question. So, um, some of these, like let's say this is regular stable oxygen. So this version with eight protons and eight neutrons. That's regular 16 weight oxygen, and it's solid, and everybody likes to use it because it's what's out there, and it works, and it's also not radioactive. Okay, its nuclei stays together just fine. But let's say uh, we've got some uh, oxygen 18 out there. It's got eight neutron or 10 neutrons and eight protons, and this heavy heavy oxygen it behaves just like regular oxygen. You can breathe it in. It does stuff. It will keep you alive but it happens to be radioactive because it's not, um, it's not stable. Now we could look up what are, the, what are the radioactive isotopes of oxygen. Maybe could somebody do that, please? I got it. Thank you, okay. So radioactive wait, isotopes wait, of... Else? Radioactive isotopes of oxygen. Thank you. So what that would mean is that if there's a, and when we find out which one it actually is, we'll be able to do this for real. Oh, you're right. Yeah? 18, well, it says 16, 17, 18. 16, 17, and 18 exist, and... I don't know. It's kind of confusing. It doesn't show if it goes farther than that. Oh, okay. There must be some lighter ones too, though, because if it's if it's rounding down, I, I think it has to be some lighter ones as well. But anyway, point is, if you have that radioactive, um, you know, and if it's not too harmful and you know, not radiating and like it's not plutonium and it's not going to like burn your flesh or anything, uh, there they can actually use that in medicine to like. Um, actually, I just heard a uh, um, uh, an interview about they were trying to figure out if a certain kind of um, thank you um, certain kind of food if sharks would eat it and take it into their into their tissues and, and use it um, and so they radioactively labeled some carbon I think or some uh, radioactively labeled means they used some radioactive carbon made some stuff out of it to feed the sharks not to hurt them or anything it's just a small amount of radiation but what they could do then is see later on if any of the tissues in the shark had that radioactive carbon built into them. And if they, because you can detect it with uh, radiation sensors, and you can be like, huh, look, they ate it, and it went into their tissue, so they must have absorbed it. That worked. Uh, and we use that in medicine too. You can take radioactive iodine, for example. Sometimes you may have known some people who have had to drink radioactive iodine before going into the hospital, and then they go into a machine, and then it goes to see, like, where did that iodine go? Because they can use a, a special camera that can detect where the radioactive iodine went, uh, thyroid gland things maybe, uh, to see what's, what's being absorbed. And uh, yeah, so that's called nuclear medicine, is when we use radioactive isotopes to be absorbed into a body and see what they do and where they go.
Yes. Okay, the site was confusing, so okay. I went to a different site yep. uh, called Wikipedia. <laughs> and yes, um, so apparently oxygen 16, 17, and 18 are stable. Are stable? Oh, okay. Oxygen 13 and oxygen 13. 15 are unstable. Ah. And they also, like, they found other, like, oxygens that mm -hmm. have lasted for, like, milliseconds, I guess. Like, milliseconds, they, yeah. They don't, they don't really last that long. Right. But up to, like, oxygen 24. Up to oxygen 24, wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty crazy. Um, but it, but did, yeah. it didn't last long. Yeah, so some of them will just like flash into existence maybe in like a particle accelerator. They smash something together and like, oh, we found some oxygen 24 blown up against the side of the wall. That didn't last long, but there it was for a second or a billionth of a second or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so these are things that can like maybe happen, but 16, 17, and 18 are the ones that are you'll find out in nature and you could breathe them in and you wouldn't even notice. 15 and 13 are out there, but... They've got some half-life. If they're, if they're radioactive, they're breaking down, but they might not be breaking down super fast. They could just be breaking down just fast enough that you could put a camera on and detect that they're breaking down. Aura, are you going to be okay? I know I'm talking about all this stuff. It's a lot. Yeah. I know. Okay. We're going to move on. But, yes? Um, so about the uh, radioactive yes. during like, medical procedures? Yeah. Um, I have a question. Okay. So there's also a type of medical procedure Sorry. Um, like, 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 oh yeah. Okay. Where they like inject it with something and use a black light, would that like would be radioactive? Probably, so, yeah. That's probably what they're going for. I'm not sure exactly how that would work, but um, yeah. I mean, if they're if they're using, um, I think so. I'm gonna have to think on that. Okay. But if they're injecting you with 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 some kind of dye, it might just be a dye. Also, mm -hmm. uh, it might not be radioactive. If it's a black light, it might just be a specific dye that would react to a, to ultraviolet light. But, um, yeah, it sounds like a similar idea, though. Okay, so this question, then, if beryllium has to have four protons, how many neutrons is in beryllium-9, this isotope of beryllium? Five. Five. Okay, because beryllium has four protons, and... If it has five neutrons, then the mass would be none. But it is beryllium because it's got four protons. Good? Great. It's going to be scintillating TV. All right. Four. Pale yellow gas. So, these are physical properties and chemical properties, and they are uh, qualitative and quantitative. All right. So, if you recall, can somebody just remind us what a physical versus a chemical property is? Physical and chemical properties. Yeah. Physical is like what it looks like, and chemical is what it reacts. Good. Yeah. Chemical is like what kind of reaction will it do? Will it have a chemical change. Now, things can change state, like uh, they can melt, water can melt, for example, sorry, <laughs> ice can melt into water, right, from solid to liquid. That's a change of state, but it's still water, okay? So that would be a physical change. Whereas um, when, um, if you burn some methane and it releases water and carbon dioxide, that is a chemical change. So, and then uh, we also had uh, qual qualitative versus quantitative. Qualitative means you can describe it with words. Quantitative means you can describe it with numbers. It's a quantity. So, pale yellow gas at room temperature. Chemical. No. Because the temperature affects it, though. Uh, but um, still, the fact it is, it's talking about what state it is. Um, so it's just it's telling what its color is uh, and what its state is. So color. And state are physical. Okay, because even if you change the temperature, you're just saying, you know, if you make it cool enough, it'll turn into a liquid. Okay, but that's still just a state change. So it's not a chemical process, or not, not a chemical reaction. It's, uh, it's like freezing and thawing. It's still whatever gas it was. I mean, not gas, but whatever uh, compound or element. Okay. 
So is this a uh, qualitative or quantitative? Qualitative. qualitative. B, it can burn or etch glass permanently. That's chemical. So uh, burning things, etching is another way of saying like it can make a mark in glass that is a chemical change in that glass. So uh, that is a chemical change. Um, its density is... <laughs> uh, no. No, density is a physical property. So density is a physical property of a, of a material. We all have our own densities. I know I have plenty of it. And uh, we've got uh, a number attached to it. So it is quantitative. I was reading the top one. Well, you shouldn't have done that. It explodes when it reacts with water. Chemical. Chemical. Yeah, if you hear react, that's a good that's a good call. Okay. Bohr Rutherford diagrams. My brain is dead. All right. So for Bohr Rutherford, just remember you always put your nucleus in the middle, your protons and neutrons, and then you have your orbitals. Your first orbital can contain two. Yes. All right. Basically, that's neon. That's the the uh, electrons of neon right there. And then the second orbital can contain eight. Eight. And the third one, same thing. same thing. And let's just say it gets more complicated the further out you go, so we're not going to go too far out. But it gets funny later. So let's go up to 18, and then take upper year chemistry if you want to know more about the orbitals for now. They are very interesting, though. So, compound one. Did I just draw it? Um, okay, so it has one extra. Yes, you see that? Yes. Yeah. And it's got a cute little arrow drawing that it's getting rid of it. Oh, I see. Okay. So this is 19. And how many? 20. Now, the neutrons here don't really matter that much. Really, what we want to know, if you're trying to identify what this is, we can look at the protons. Yes? So there's a couple of hints as to where this will be. First of all, it's, it's got an atomic number of 19. That's the best one, probably. And so that means it must be, where am I pointing here? Potassium. There we go. K for potassium. Okay. But also, we've got one, two, three full orbitals, and then we have one extra electron. So that means it's going to be one, two, three rows down plus one. Okay, this extra electron puts it in that next row. So it's in row four. Okay. And what this is showing is it's going to lose one electron because the ones that are these metals over here, these alkali metals, are trying to get rid of that one electron so they can just have their full outer shell like this. The one on the next one, 17, got the same situation, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, Three, and they conveniently put, I think, the missing electron right here. Mm -hmm. So this one is trying to show that it wants to fill that one extra space. And it'll make a deal with this one over here. So this is potassium. And this must be chlorine. So in our little model that we did before, when I said you've got one thing with one arm and another thing with another arm, that's basically this situation right here. This is trying to give away one thing. This is trying to gain one thing, right? And that's going to be a one-to-one. -one. K and Cl will join 
K1, CL1, which we don't have to write the numbers, so it's just KCL. So the elements represented, A, are potassium and chlorine. Um, this diagram, is it an ionic compound or a molecular compound? Ionic. They got it right here. Ionic, right? So this is an ionic compound. Jalal said that. Good job, Jalal, plus everyone else. Okay? So what we get here, when this, when this potassium loses this electron, what charge does it then have? Positive. Positive one. Okay? You can picture it with a one plus, or you can just put it, we're just going to have plus. For, for the charge of one, and chlorine has picked up an electron, so it's going to have a charge of minus. Minus one, yeah. Okay? Um, the chemical formulas and names for these compounds, potassium and chlorine, uh, what is the name of this? Potassium chloride. Potassium chloride. Good. Now, why don't we have to say monopotassium monochloride? Because that sounds dumb. Because it sounds dumb, because... By the names, and this is what our whole package is going to be about, by the names of these compounds, we can figure a bit by, of electrons, we can figure out that there's got to be one of each, and so we don't have to say in the name how many there are, because it's actually understood, and this is what, if you don't already know, and that's fine if you don't, because that's what we're going to do, um, you can figure out the number of each atom, of each element, just by the name. <laughs> Shifa, you look scared but it's going to be fine. That's what we're going to do. Okay? It does. And so you don't need to. Um, but because these are, um, yeah, so, so ionic compounds, you don't need to put mono, di, tri, stuff like that. Molecular compounds, you do, because they can combine in different ways. Uh, the bottom one there, that's oxygen. I'm just going to dispense with the formalities here, but it's oxygen and then two hydrogens. And they show them overlapping. That is cool. Yes? Covalent, covalent. So when the valence shells, when they're sharing those electrons to make the same kind of deal, that's called covalent, or that's also what we call a molecular compound. So what could we call this? Well, it's H2O, so you could call it water, but it's also um, uh, dihydrogen, two hydrogens and one oxygen, so dihydrogen monoxide or dihydrogen oxide. Okay. There is dihydrogen dioxide. Anybody know what that's called? Dihydrogen dioxide. Mm -hmm. eh, it's not that bad. It is super. It's hydrogen. Oh. The, the chemical formula would be H2O. Why? Two hydrogens and one oxygen. No, we're still on five. We're on five now. Uh, yes. Oh, no, no. This one is KCL. KCL for number one and dihydrogen monoxide or H2O for... Okay. All right. Now, why is it, why is it per oxide? Uh, per means extra. So it's got one extra oxygen. All right. You didn't need to Okay. So first of all, this is one way of showing a chemical reaction. Okay? But what, we're, what I'd like you to start thinking of is, let's call, um, let's say this is element A, 
Okay, so all the blue ones are A. And all of the yellow ones, let's call them B. Okay? So, this is a bit of a strange reaction because we're adding two things together that are the same and getting a, it's, 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 this is what we call a, well, it's a bit of a weird way of writing this reaction. Let's just put it that way. Uh, really what we have is AB2 plus AB2 makes AB plus AB, right? Which is really the same thing as saying 2AB2, looks like math, I know, becomes 2AB. And if that's true, then by math, we could just say AB2 becomes AB. We get rid of the 2 because they're not necessary. That's wrong. But anyway, what this is saying is that somehow AB2 can break down and become AB. But, <laughs> stay with me, stay with me. That aside, let's just take a look at how many of each thing we have. Because this, this is before you put them together. We're not actually putting anything together here, but something happens to them. So B, A, and B before the reaction, and B, A, and B after the reaction. They start off babs, and they end up abs. Okay. So how does that happen? Well. It could happen. There are things that do something like this. But how many of each do we have before the reaction? These are called reactants, by the way. And these are called products. Okay? <laughs> reactants are before the reaction happens. Products are after. All right? But the trouble we have here is how many... A's do we have in our reactants over here? One, two. Two, actually. And how many B's do we have? Four. B we have times four. How many product, uh, A products do we have? Seven. No. Four. A we have two. But B... Two. We have only two. So, here's the thing. Stay with me. Thank you, Jalal. Okay. We have six things, basically, right? Before the reaction happens. And after the reaction, stay, stay with me, please. After the reaction, we have four things. What happened to the extra two things? What happened to those extra two Bs? They died. They died. Well, right now, what Jalal we're saying is... Yeah, I know, but it's wrong because it can't happen. <laughs> what this is... These things are what we call in the business matter. It's hard for me to do this when you're talking a lot. Please stay with me. We're almost done. Okay? You can't have stuff before a reaction that vaporizes and disappears after the reaction. All the things in a reaction have to be there before and after. Okay? So. We can't have four Bs here and only two Bs here. You have to have four Bs here somehow. So we need to have a balancing of this equation. That is all. We're going to find out how to do that as we make equations happen. That's all. Oh, yeah, thank you. Okay, that's enough. Thank you. Are we asking you? Sheba? Oh, my God, yeah. Can you put some Way to remember, Chifa. You understand it? You understand what I say? Oh, uh, here's like, what you say. What do you say? I'm saying, I'm saying what do you say? What do you say? I'm saying what do you say? So you guys say, I'm saying what do you say? Yes. Oh, yes, sir. Mark. Uh, Mark is Are you seeing it? Uh, I'm going to take this. I got it. 
Okay. So, I don't want 